So in the last class we have discussed analytically the mesh current analysis. Uh, we will solve example on mesh currents. Okay, so I will take first very simple ladder network. Okay, of three loops. Then we will go to the other parts of the uh, examples. Okay, so fine. Current in all branches. Find current in all branches using mesh analysis. Using mesh analysis for the circuit shown. Using mesh analysis for the circuit shown. So the circuit shown. So this is the circuit shown. Now I have to find the current in all the branches. Current in all the branches. Now there are four closed paths or four loops okay, or four meshes. Mesh 1, mesh 2, mesh 3, mesh 4. Okay, so this will also form a mesh. Now the number of mesh equations are equal to number of meshes. Number of equations equals to number of meshes. So if there are three uh, meshes, there will be three equations. If there are four meshes, there will be four equations. If there are five meshes, five equations, so on. Okay. So here there are four meshes, there will be four equations. But it is difficult to solve using our uh, regular calculator if the number of equations goes beyond three. Equation uh, Two equations, three equations, we can solve very conveniently using our directly calculator or by a back substitution method or elimination method, okay, or by using Kramer's rule. But once the number of equations are more than three, using Kramer's rule also becomes very difficult because we have to go on taking the determinant of four by four matrix or five by five matrix, which will be very difficult and time consuming. So whenever the mesh analysis example is in front of you, you should first check whether is there any possibility of reducing the number of meshes by source shifting or source transformation okay or not or generally with source transformation or don't do it by source shifting you go do it by source transformation uh, you think about this only if the number of meshes are more than three if number of meshes are exactly three you directly go ahead with writing mesh equations and go for solution. If number of meshes are more than three, then think of think of circuit protection. Okay, whether it is possible to reduce one uh, mesh at least, I can get the maximum of three meshes out of that. Okay. So now, in this example, there is a possibility that I can convert this. I can convert this. 2M, the 5M, 2 m the 5m 2 ohm source current source to an voltage source okay so you can write here convert phi 2 ohm current source to voltage source phi 2 ohm current source to voltage source Okay, when I do that, I have to redraw the circuit one second. Okay. 
So phi m, the direction of the current is downwards. So the source will be having the polarity or direction downwards. Okay. So this is a circuit, and this resistance is the sum of series resistance of the source and this three ohm resistance. So this is. 3 plus 2 is equals to 5. This is 4 ohm, 5 ohms, 6 ohm, 8 ohm, and this is 25 ohms. Okay. Now this is the source, and the source value is 5 ohms and 2 ohms. 5 ohms into 2 ohms, it is 10 volts. Okay, 5 ohms into 2 ohms it is 10 volts. So now there are three meshes. To each mesh, I will assign one current. Okay. For each mesh, I have to assign one mesh current. So I told that mesh current direction I we generally uh, use it to be uh, clockwise. So let this be I1. I2, I3, okay, and you, this is mesh 1, mesh 2, mesh 3, okay. Now I have to write KVL equation for each mesh. Okay, so time being I will erase this part. KVL equation to mesh one. So to write KVL equation, I should be knowing the polarities. Okay, I should be knowing the polarities of the uh, potential differences. For a source, it is active uh, sign convention plus minus. It is fixed. For this A term, the current is uh, entering in clockwise direction. So the point where current enters is positive, where it leaves is negative. For I one. In 6 ohm, current is entering from top to bottom plus and minus. In I2, in 6 ohm, it will be plus, it will be minus. So this sign convention is for mesh 1, this sign convention is for mesh 2. Okay. So I2 is entering 5 ohm, here it will be plus and minus. I2 is entering 4 ohm, this will be plus and minus. I2 is entering 4 ohm, this will be plus and minus. 5 ohm plus and minus, this is already no plus, minus and plus. So this is the sign convention. Uh, don't do mistake in giving the sign convention. Okay. Now, I have to write the equation for mesh 1. So how to write the equation? I should be tracing the circuit in clockwise direction and observing whether I get a rise in potential or fall in potential across each element. So there are three elements, 25 volt, 8 ohm and 6 ohm. So number of terms in equation should be equal to number of the, uh, elements in that particular mesh. So there are three elements in this mesh. There will be three terms in mesh 1 equation. There will be, there are three elements in mesh 2, three terms will be in mesh 2 equation. Three elements in mesh 3, there will be three terms in mesh 3 equation. Okay. So this is the common cross check whether we have covered all the elements in our equation or not. Okay. So coming to mesh one, okay. for 25 volt source, you observe I am when I am tracing it in clockwise direction, there is a rise in potential. The trace is going from minus to plus, rise in potential. So this will be plus 25. 
coming to A tone. Okay. When I am tracing this A tone register, then there is a fall in potential. Okay. So minus A into mesh current is I1. Next, when I am tracing further 6 ohm register in mesh 1, it is fall in potential. Okay. It is fall in potential and the current is now I1 is flowing from mesh 1. I2 is flowing in mesh 2. So I2 is opposing I1. So therefore I will take minus 6 into I1 minus I2 is equals to 0. Okay. Is equals to 0. Now simplify this. I will get this as minus 8 I1 minus 6 I1 plus 6 I2 plus 25 is equals to 0. Okay. Or I can write I will adjust here only plus 8 I1 plus 6 I1 minus 6 I2 is equals to 25. So this is equation 1. This equation 1. Okay. Or uh, not this one. We will take area. 8 plus 6 14. 14 I1 minus 6 I2 is equals to 25. Or you keep it as it is. Fourteen I one minus six I two is equal to twenty five. This is equation one. Now, KVM for mesh two. Follow the same process. Okay. Now, when I am tracing this circuit, uh, now in six ohm resistor, current I two is also flowing. Current I one is also flowing. Now, I am in mesh 2, I will take I2 as positive current, I1 as opposite current. So, now the current in 6 ohm will be I2 minus I1 and the polarity is such that it is falling potential. So, therefore, it will be minus 6 I2 minus I1, minus 6 I2 minus I1 in 5 ohm, minus 5 I2 in 4 ohm, minus 4 now it is in mesh 2, it will be I2 minus I3 is equals to 0. Okay, rearrange the terms. I will take directly uh, plus 6 I1. Okay, minus 6 I2 minus 5 I2, minus 11 I2 minus 4 I2, okay, minus 15 I2. Then plus 4 I think is equal to 0. Now this is equation 2. This is equation 2. Now third KVL or mesh 3. KVL for mesh 3. Okay, following the same thing here, I3 is flowing through 4 ohms, I2 is also flowing through 4 ohms. But now I am in mesh 3, I take I3 as positive direction and I2 as opposite direction. So therefore I will take in 4 ohms, I3 minus I2. So minus 4, I3 minus I2. Then in 5 ohms here, in 5 ohms, minus 5 I3. Then here it is 10 volts. Now in this direction of the tracing, there is a rise in potential. So it is plus 10 volts is equals to 0. So this I can write it as minus 4 or plus 4 I3 plus 4 I2 minus 4 I3 minus 5 I3 that is minus 9 I3 plus 10 is equals to 0 or okay. Minus 4 I2 
plus 9i3 is equals to 10. Now, this is equation 3. This is equation 3. Now, I got three equations. If I solve these three equations and all the three equations are in terms of I1, I2, I3 as unknowns. So, when I solve these three equations, I will get I1, I2 and I3. Once I get to know what is I1, I2 and I3, I can get the currents in all the branches. Okay. Now, solve equation. Solving equation 1, 2, I, 3. Solving equation 1, 2, I, 3. Okay. Now, substitute the coefficient of these three equations in the calculator in equation mode. So, first coefficient is 14 minus 6. Now, coefficient of I3 is 0 in equation 1. So, C1 is 0 equal to D1 is 25. A2 in equation 2 is 6 minus 15 4 D2 is 0. RHS is 0. See, you can observe in the second mesh, there is no source. All the elements in the second mesh are passive elements. There is no voltage source nor current source. So therefore, the RHS of second equation will be 0 for this circuit. Okay. And equation th 3. In third equation, the coefficient of I1 is 0. So A3 will be 0. B3 minus 4. C3 9. B3 is 10. So my I1, I1 is 2.39, I2 1.42 MPS, I3 1.74 MPS. So observe all the three currents obtained are positive. All the three currents obtained are positive. It means that all the currents I1, I2 and I3 are flowing in clockwise direction. So assume the direction of the current is same as that of actual direction of the current. Suppose if any of the current would have come negative, if any of the current would have come negative, then it means that that particular current flows in opposite direction to that what I have assumed. Now this clockwise direction of the current is simply assumed. Okay, it is simply assumed. I did not uh, say that at the earlier stage itself that current will flow in clockwise. No, it is simply an assumption. You can write and solve the same example using anti-clockwise mesh currents. You can try that. And see that if you take anti-clockwise currents I1, I2, I3, all I1, I2 and I3 will come with minus sign with the same values. They have to come with the same values, but the sign will be negative. Okay. But don't do a mistake that taking first mesh current clockwise, second anti-clockwise, third again clockwise. Don't do that mistake. Okay. Do that. for If you take clockwise, take for all the meshes clockwise. If you take anti-clockwise, take for all the meshes anti-clockwise. Okay. That is how we have to solve now once I know what is the current in I1, I2, I3, I will be knowing what is the current in 6 ohm and 4 ohm. Because now I know what is the current in this branch, this branch, this branch. And in these branches the currents are same. Okay. Now therefore, I8 ohm is equals to I1 is equals to 2.39 amps. Now don't forget to keep this result. Okay. Most of the time what mistakes we do is. Once we get I1, I2, I3, we, we feel that the solution is obtained, the example is over. But you should read the statement what is given. The statement given here is, we have to find the current in each branch. We have to find the current in each branch. So when I have to find the current in each branch, after I get the main currents or the mesh currents, I should be writing the currents in each branch, what are the currents. So these are mesh currents, not branch currents. Mesh currents are different, branch currents are different. Okay. Because you observe, 
in this branch mesh current is same branch current is same but whereas in this branch the branch which is common between two meshes mesh current side dif different branch current side different because I1 will not flow in second mesh, I2 will not flow in first mesh. So therefore, at the end I have to keep, if it is asked to find the current in each branch, I should be keeping in branches, in the result in the branch currents. Current in 8 ohms is nothing but my I1, 2.3 amps. Current in 6 ohms is nothing but my uh, now what should I take? Should I take I1 minus I2 or I2 minus I1? That is the question. Because I took I1 minus I2 standing in mesh 1. I took I2 minus I1 standing in mesh 2. But when the analysis is over, standing in any of the mesh doesn't mean any, uh, doesn't give any significance. Because I stood in the each mesh only to find the mesh currents. Now I need not to stand there only. I have to come out of the meshes and see the entire circuit. Now what the value of current in 6 ohms? It should be always higher value minus lower value, obviously. Okay. So now in 6 ohm, it is I1 minus I2. I1 is larger than I2. Therefore, it is I1 minus I2. Now if I2 was greater than I1, it would have been I2 minus I1. Simple. So 2.39 minus 1.42 okay. so this is equals to uh, point 97 amperes okay. 0.97 amps then I phi ohm I phi ohm, it is I2 equal to 1.42 amps. I4 ohm, uh, now it is, where should I take I2 minus I3 or I3 minus I2? See whichever is greater. Uh, I3 is 1.74 and I2 is 1.42. Now it will be I3 minus I2. Now, if you take I2 minus I3, you will get negative current. What does it mean? The current is not flowing from top to bottom in 4 ohm, but it is flowing from bottom to top. Because I3 is greater. Okay. This is equals to 1.74 minus 1.4. And this is 0.32 amps. Okay. I4 ohm. Next, I5 ohm I3. Okay. So, this is how we have to go to the solution when the mesh analysis is been asked. Okay. I will take one AC circuit because so far we haven't seen any AC circuit in the analysis. Uh, I will tell you how to write the equation for AC circuit. Solution you please do on your own. Okay. Because it takes a lot of time. Same question, find the current in all the branches in the circuit shown.
find the branch, uh, find the current on the branches in the circuit shown. So the circuit given is If at an angle 0 volts, direction is upward, 5 ohms, J to ohm, 3 ohms, 4 ohms, 1 ohm, minus J to ohm, 3 ohms, and 26 at an angle minus 65 degrees. So this is the given circuit. So assign the currents, mesh currents. This is mesh one. Mesh two, mesh three. Okay. So now assign the mesh current for mesh one. I one. I two. I. Now how to mark the polarities for the active elements as well as passive elements? That is the question. In DC, the polarities will stay the same unless the current changes. And for sources, it will remain same forever. But in AC, the polarities are changing after every half cycle. After first 180 degrees, it will change from positive to negative. After uh, next 180 degrees, it will change from negative to positive. So there are no fixed polarities. There are no fixed polarities in AC components. Then how to take the polarity in the mesh equations? That is the question. Okay. Now when uh, I you go for mesh current analysis, I generally keep only the voltage sources as sources in the equations. Because if I have current source, that mesh current is equal to that current source value. Okay, that mesh current is equal to that current source value. Now, what about the polarities coming to with voltage sources and other passive elements? We should understand the nature of elements for that. There are two elements active element and passive element. Active element in my circuit will be always the sources because I don't use any other. In my study in network analysis or circuit analysis here, I will not come into picture any other active elements in the circuit like operational amplifiers or transistor amplifiers, okay, in that way. So therefore, in my entire study in this course, in this subject, I should keep it in mind that active elements are the sources, passive elements are resistance, inductance, capacitance these three components and as per the definition of active and passive elements what we have seen in the earlier class active elements will give the power out passive element will take the power in it means that current will flow out of active element and current will flow into the passive element so whatever the voltage is there by the source it will get distributed 
among all the passive elements connected to that source. Okay. Now, suppose in this loop, the voltage source is of 50 volts at an angle 0 degrees. Now, that 50 volt at an angle 0 degrees is getting distributed in all the elements along with this source value also. So, when I write the term for voltage source in my KVL equation, you take that as positive. When I write the term for the voltage drop across passive element, you take it as negative. Because following the polarities is in DC circuit, following the polarity is not possible in AC circuit. Because polarity is changing after every time. But once I know what the nature of element is, whether it is active or passive, I can conveniently write whether the voltage across that element is the source value or whether the voltage across that element is the drop value. So voltage across voltage source is the source value. Voltage across 5 ohm, J2 ohms, 3 ohms, 4 ohms, 1 ohm, minus J2 ohms and 3 ohms are the drop values. So source values take you, you take positive, drop values you take negative. You have to remember this. Okay. Don't go into the uh, uh, messing up of uh, understanding the polarities in AC circuit. Simple understand. If it is voltage source value, take positive. If it is current, uh, sorry, if it is voltage drop value, take negative. Just okay. Don't do anything else. Now, KVL for measure. KVL for measure. Now writing source value is 50 volts at an angle 0. Next, minus phi I1 coming to minus J2 into I1 minus 3, sorry, minus J2 into it is I1 minus I2 minus 3 into I1 minus I2. So, how many terms are there? 1, 2, 3, 4 term, uh, elements are there. 1, 2, 3, 4 terms are there. Equals to 0. Equals to 0. Okay. Or I can write this as 50 at an angle 0 minus phi I1 minus 2 sorry 3 plus j2 into i1 minus i2 is equals to 0 okay this is 3 plus j2 only this branch 15 or i will write this as minus phi i1 minus 3 i1 okay so minus 8 i1 Next, uh, minus J2 I2, sorry, minus J2 I1, okay. or I will write directly here. Real part of I1 will add to real part of I1, I will write it as minus of 8 plus J2 I1, okay. minus outside 5 plus 3, 8 I1. Minus of 8 plus J2 I1. Next. Uh, plus. 3 plus J2 I2. Plus 50 at an angle. 0. Equal to 0. Or. I can write it as. 8 plus J2 I1. Minus. 3 plus J2 I2 is equal to 50 at an angle 0. Now this is equation 1. This is equation 1. Somewhere I will write equation 1 because later I need that. 8 plus J2 I1 minus 3 plus J2 I2 is equals to 50 at an angle 0. Now this is equation 1. Next, KVL for mesh 2.
KVL for mesh two. In mesh two, there are no active elements, so all will be negative terms. I can write three plus J two. This is minus of three plus J two into I two minus I one because I am in mesh two. So current in common elements is I two minus I one. Okay, because it is passive element, it is minus. 3 plus J2. I have taken in combination 3 plus J2. Okay. Then minus 4 I2. Minus 4 I2. Then here 1 minus J2. Minus of 1 minus J2 into I2 minus I3 is equals to zero. Is equals to zero. So after simplification. What I will get is mm -hmm. minus of three plus J two I one sorry uh, plus three plus J two I one. Minus three plus J two I two minus four I two minus one minus J two I two. Okay, so I will do one thing. Minus of three plus J two I one for I two three plus J two plus three uh, plus four plus one eight plus eight minus J zero. Into I two minus one minus J two into I three is equals to zero. So this equation you will get after the simplification. Okay. Or three plus J two I one minus eight I two plus one minus J two I three is equals to zero. Now this is equation two. This is equation two. Now next KVL for equation three or KVL for mesh three. Sorry. KVL for mesh three. Now KVL for mesh three. There is one active source, and there are three passive elements. Active element is one, passive element is three. So directly, twenty six at an angle minus sixty five minus okay, twenty six at an angle minus sixty five minus of one minus J two into I three minus I two. Now we are in mesh three, I three minus I two, and the common element is one minus J two, okay. and minus three I three is equal to C. Okay, or I can write it as four minus J two into I three. Sorry. I can write it as minus one minus J two into I two plus four minus J two into I three is equal to twenty six at an angle minus sixty five. This is equation three. This is equation three. Okay, now I have to solve these equations, three equations. I will just give you the Kramer's rule formula for these three equations, or I will write it in the matrix form. 
you do the simplification and get the answer because it is it will take a lot of time on board you should understand how to write the equation and you should practice how to get to the answer after so taking the solution okay there is nothing to understand in finding the solution because next is only the mathematical simplification okay and mathematical analysis but how to come to these equations is the conceptual understanding okay so you should understand the concept to write the equation and to get the proper answer you should practice it without practicing you won't get proper answer because many like i told in the previous class many students will write the equation but they will not come to the result or to the solution because in the middle somewhere they get lost because of lengthy error process or because of some uh, mistakes in the equations they won't be coming to the solution they keep it at the halfway of the example and leave it there it won't fetch any marks okay it won't fetch any marks if you get correct answer then it is evident that what all you have done from first step to the last is correct you will get full marks if your answers are incorrect then you don't think that you will lose marks only for the answers like if it is a 8 marks example you will you will lose two marks you will get six marks no you may get only two marks for attempting to write the equation okay so this is the difficulty in this subject that is why it feels hard to write solve this in the exam so the only way to get easiness in the solution is to have practice after understanding the concepts okay now i will write the equation in matrix form it is 8 plus j2 minus of 3 plus j2 0 Second equation: three plus j two minus eight one minus j two. This is minus of sorry zero. I one coefficient is zero. Minus of one minus j two four minus j two. I one. I two, I three equals to the RHS fifty at an angle zero. Second equation RHS is zero, twenty six at an angle minus sixty five. Now how to cross check whether your equations are correct or not? Observe these two terms. the second coefficient of first equation second first coefficient of second equation these should be same with opposite side if your equations are correctly written then second element of first row and first element of second row will be exactly the same in magnitude but only with opposite side next third element of second row and second element of third row these are exactly the same with opposite side okay these are exactly the same with opposite side if these two are matching each other if these two are matching each other then all the three equations what you have written are correct okay if there is mistake in finding the simplification i am keeping the equation you should recheck now only so it is always recommended when you go for the solution of equations cross check this observe the three equations and check the second coefficient of first equation and first coefficient of second equation if these two are same and with opposite sign then first two equations are correct okay provided the other term in the first term you did not make any mistake in taking plus and minus observe second equation and third equation the second first term the second term of third equation and the third term of second equation should be same but opposite side 
then your equations are correct. Okay, so if you follow this, it will be uh, useful. Okay, in reducing the mistakes. Now you know how to solve with Kramer's rule. Follow the Kramer's rule. Take a determinant. Or uh, for I one I will write. For other two you do that. Okay. I one hint from my side in exam, especially for the exam. If you have AC circuits in any question, don't attempt it at first. Though it is simple, because the tendency of making mistakes in AC circuits is more than in DC circuits. And moreover, the time taken to solve AC circuits is more than DC circuit because in DC circuits I can substitute equations in calculator and get the result. But whereas in AC circuit you should do completely using Kramer's rule in manually, so it consumes more time. So if you have AC circuit and DC circuit, choose first DC circuit to solve. Finish all the DC circuit solutions, then you go behind the AC circuits. You please keep AC circuit solution. At the end, at the end means not after or in the last 30 minutes. I am not telling in that way. You first finish, first write all the uh, questions which you think you are comfortable to answer and know the answers exactly. Finish those things at first. If you think that some trial has to be made in any circuit, you do it first for DC circuits. Then at the end, you take up AC circuits. It is uh, uh, always recommended because these consume more time okay now i will write for i1 i1 is equals to how i can write i1 determinant of determinant of coefficient of coefficient matrix i should take a determinant of coefficient matrix such that for i1 i should replace first column by the rhs matrix for I1, I should replace first column by RHS matrix. For I2, I should replace second column by RHS matrix. First and third will remain same. For I3, I should replace third column by RHS matrix. First and second will remain same. Now for I1, replace first column by RHS matrix, keeping second and third column exactly the same. So first column is 50 at an angle 0. I will write it with threading. So it is glaringly visible. 0 I. 26 at an angle minus 65. Now second and third column will remain same minus of 3 plus j2 minus 8 minus of 1 minus j2. Third column 0, 1 minus j2, 4 minus j2. determinant of this divided by delta now what is delta if this is matrix a this is matrix b and matrix c this is determinant of matrix b. that is determinant of I will draw this or I will rewrite this so hardly it will take few seconds. Determinant of coefficient matrix exactly as it is 8 plus j2 minus 3 plus j2 0 3 plus j2 minus 8 1 minus j2, 0 minus of 1 minus j2, 4 minus j2. So this will be of one value, complex value. And all you have to do this in complex mode of your calculator. Okay, you should keep your calculator in complex mode and do that. Okay? Yes. This is the mesh analysis one part of the mesh analysis okay now there is one difficulty in the mesh analysis if a current source will come 
in common what should i do now it is not as simple as we did now some uh, deviation we have to take in the analysis technique okay that we will see in the next class okay how to solve it if in the mesh current analysis if there is a circuit and there is a common branch between two meshes and that branch consists of a current source when a current source is in between two meshes as a common element then how it has to be solved that we will look into in the next class okay it will not be directly as what we have done now small the deviation we have to take in the solution how it has to be done uh, we will look into that okay so as of now we will end the session